You know those points in life where you either create something or finish a project and everything just falls into place and it's on autopilot. Then time butts in and you know you have to start changing things, but you really don't want to. Apparently, Kia is experiencing such a moment. So a fascinating concept, but what exactly do I mean? Well, to illustrate it, let's talk about the Telluride. Remember when that came out a couple of years ago? It was a ridiculous and unexpected sales success to the point where they couldn't make enough of them in the first year, in the second year, in the third year. And the planned mid-cycle refresh, they still couldn't make enough of them, but they had already planned this mid-cycle refresh, so they went ahead with it anyway. Well, apparently the Seltos is following suit. This still, they can't build enough of these things, but they planned the mid-cycle refresh and here we are. So what's different? Well, they changed the front a bit, but more important to you and I, they've got 20 more horsepower out of the 1.6 turbocharged four. Then there's another design change that ties the Telluride and this together. And that would be the tail light signature. Now, remember when we drove the updated Telluride in San Antonio, Texas, we drove the more Subaru-esque type one, the X-Pro, but all of them have the same more angular tail light signature. Apparently they pilfered that tail light signature and applied it to the rear of the Seltos. The rest of it, in terms of the length, the wheelbase, the overall design, it's very much the same. Then there's the whole business of what this car is designed to do, and that is fuel economy. In this one, the 1.6 turbo all-wheel drive, 25, 27, 26 combined. So yes, this is lighter than what you and I normally drive, but only because it's smaller, 3,362 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 1,525 kilograms. However, something I didn't expect, this with the all-wheel drive and the turbo engine is 430 pounds more than if it were two-wheel drive with the two-liter engine. With that. Oh yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a delay there. Uh, I feel the extra 20 horsepower once it gets up to speed. It's not even a situation where a certain amount of RPM, it starts to wake up. The car has to get over like 30, 35 miles an hour, and that's where you really feel the difference in the extra horsepower. What you really notice here is the difference in the transmission. I am one of the few people that really liked that seven speed dual clutch that was made in-house and engineered in-house by Hyundai Kia Group. It had rougher shifts off the line, felt a bit more immediate. The benefit here, much smoother shifts. It feels different. As you and I get into this lovely seaside New England community just outside of Newport, Rhode Island, let me put this equation a bit more succinctly. This is a trade-off between faster acceleration and smoother shifts. Now you guys know I am not a fan of being practical or sitting in the back of any car, much less a small car. But here you and I do need to test it because it is a shorter wheelbase, which means the packaging isn't as useful back here. It's really for, I would argue, folks who don't have kids, maybe a dog or very small kids. This is where I, a six footer, would sit. And believe it or not, there actually is a good amount of room here. Most important thing, the hip point, basically where your butt hits the seat, it's actually high here. So it's like stadium seating. I don't feel claustrophobic back here. Then while we're at it, interesting point, it actually has reclining seats in the back of the Seltos. And then it's got USB-C now, which means I can plug in the cord that came with my phone, because nowadays I'm having a hard time actually finding outlets like this, because I no longer have the USB-A. Now driving dynamics and ride quality here, not really any change, and that is a good thing. This was a very good balance between composure and compliance. And to give you an idea of what I mean when I say that, compliance is, it goes over the road a bit softer. There's more compliance as it goes over bumps, so your passengers are not disturbed as much. Think more luxury when you think on the compliance side of driving dynamics, where composure, it cleans up all planes of motion. 
And here, the composure isn't as strong, say, as like a, an Elantra N. This is a tall vehicle, and you can feel a little waft from side to side in the composure area. Hopefully that clarifies what I mean when I say composure and compliance. However, ride quality here, that's what this thing was tuned for from the start. And something that plays into that is the size of the vehicle. One would think this is about the length and wheelbase of say like a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla. In reality, it's a bit shorter than those in both dimensions. You would think it would make for a bit of a choppier ride. Here, not so much. And that's really a function of the shorter wheelbase and the height of the vehicle combined with the extra 430 pounds in this turbo all wheel drive model. So putting this another way, there are really no changes in the way this updated Seltos drives with the ride quality. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant, a car most of us would agree didn't really need to be updated, but here it is updated. The 2024, I believe, Kia Seltos for a base price of $24,390. Now I'm kind of sandbagging you. The car we're driving is not the basic one, which has a torsion beam rear suspension as well as 17 inch wheels. This instead is the fancy SX with a 1.6 turbo and an eight speed torque converter automatic. That one has a base price of Ready for this? $29,990. Which brings us to a rather prudent question. What's the difference between like an S, an LX, and this, the SX? Well, the SX comes with 18 inch wheels, a Bose stereo, power seat, and bi LED headlamps. However, this one, believe it or not, is fitted with a factory option, something we usually don't get on a Kia, a Hyundai, or a Genesis. However, here it is the SX sunroof package. So yeah, obviously it comes with a sunroof, but it adds vented front seats as well as a power tailgate and a digital key for an additional $1,200. Then believe it or not, there is a second factory option fitted to this one. And I'm shocked to tell you this, but it's the white paint. They actually charge you extra for snow white pearl. $395. There are some new colors on offer this year. They have this teal. Basically, anything you want that's extra is $395. Then this one, of course, they have to charge you for the floor mats, $175. Really? This is a $30,000 car. And then destination and handling, $1,325. What I want to point out is more than a destination handling than most Mercedes, which brings us to a total retail price of, wow, $33,085. So you and I have covered most everything in terms of changes with the now updated Seltos. There's just one thing we have yet to get to, and that one thing has been staring you in the face with this entire episode, and that would be the dashboard. Look familiar? EV6, then the Telluride, uh, EV9, and now this. This one, it looks a bit smaller, and it's contained within the existing design of interior on the Seltos, which already was a good thing. And I kind of feel that's the theme of the entire change of this vehicle. It's, let's make some slight changes, but not too much because it's already a good thing. And really what they've done here is they've taken two 10 inch screens and put them under one piece of glass or plastic, whatever you want to call it, and made it look fancier to appeal to the kind of people that would buy this, which for the avoidance of doubt, not me. This is too practical and too tall. This is for practical people that are looking for something that has a little bit of pizzazz. Like for example, a buddy of mine, his daughter, she just got one of these because she thought it was cute. Now it's a bit more techno than cute on the inside. Does the fancier face change any of your interaction with the existing UX? No, it's like you would see in an EV6 or a new Telluride. The one thing you do notice here, this one's a bit fancier on the inside. This is the highest trim and it's got this now new beige interior, which I have to say does work well with the white. I'd like to see it with a better color on the outside, but overall the fit and finish is a bit better here and here, which brings us to a very valid question. If you're going to put the work in to make it better here and here, why not make the material a little bit better here and here? Just saying. Okay, so what have you and I learned today? Well, what is old is new again comes to mind. You see, 
What was the old Seltos is the new Seltos, and that is to say a good thing. They changed a couple of things here to make it more relevant for today, but at the end of the day, they didn't change what made it successful. And I would argue this update is more successful than the one in the Telluride. You see those many small changes brought the overall Telluride away from the natural beauty of the original Telluride. That is not the case here, which brings us to the wish list. And here, I'm not going to shock anyone by saying 33 grand, really? That seems like a lot of money for a small car. But here's the catch, and this is what I'm asking for in the wish list. How about that basic one with a real geared transmission like this? It doesn't have to be the turbo engine, doesn't have to have all the fancy bits that this has, but it needs to lose the CVT that the basic one has. And then at least the option of a sunroof so maybe an all-wheel drive with a real transmission and the option of a sunroof at like 28 grand? To me, that seems more straight across the plate. But I am one man, and this is the point of the episode that I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV All Word, Motoman TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing these episodes with your friends. And then on the YouTubes, do all what YouTube wants you to do, which is the subscribing, notifications, and hit the like button, because that, believe it or not, helps us greatly here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.